Uh, you, you guys certainly maximize that situation. You mentioned momentum. Um, that's kind of been a big key for you, for you guys. You had, you saw that with uh, Once in Future, Something's Killing the Children, and that momentum started to build going into uh, folklore. And then this year, we saw it with Wind and then Seven Secrets. We only find them when they're dead. And it seems like 2021 is not going to be any different as we move into a absolute major release with Matt Kent and Keanu Reeves and Berserker, uh, something that we've kind of been talking about for a while. We've known for a little bit longer than that. And it's been kind of like one of the most highly anticipated books uh, I can think of from a creator owned property. So uh, share with us how that all came to be and, and, and what we can expect. Well, I uh, mentioned earlier that we have a media team that's dedicated to making movies and TV shows. And so we, we have offices on the Fox lot. And so just for those keeping track at home, we have a first look deal with um, Netflix, but we also have a feature film deal with uh, what was Fox and is now 20th Century. And so we have our offices on that lot and we got a phone call that Keanu wanted to come pitch us a comic book. So these are good things to have incoming calls like that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I turn around twice and I find myself sitting down on the couch and Keanu Reeves is standing in front of me and he's physically acting berserker out. And I'll tell you, here's what Keanu, here's how, like, like Jack, tell me if you'd say yes to this pitch. Okay. Okay. And then, and then maybe we'll yes. let Brian. Let, <laughs> <laughs> you say we'll Keanu. Let yes. No, Brian has some input. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Keanu walks up and he goes, "I just really," and he pulls his fist back, and he's like, "I just want to punch a dude through the chest. I just want to punch dudes through the chest." And I was like, "I mean, he's standing, acting it like he's lunging across the room, like." I was just like, I was completely enraptured. And then basically he sort of spun out a bunch of different ideas where it was like, this character is immortal. He goes all the way back to Babylon. You know, he's been hiding in the world's wars. So he talked about like a Napoleonic war where like you see the battlefield and, you know, the, just the wreckage of all the dead corpses and all the smoke and the cannons and everything. And you just see one of the corpses get up and kind of dust itself off and walk off into the woods because he was pretending he was dead so that he could use the war as cover for his immortality. And so uh, he just spun this sort of massive epic saga that had a lot of emotion and a tremendous amount of heart. And we got to the end of it and he said, and we'll get Raphael Grandpa to do the cover. Now, if that isn't somebody smacking you upside the head and saying, I know my comics, right? Right. Like I have taste, I care, I'm paying attention. And Oh, by the way, if you try to talk me out of Raphael grandpa, I, I, I you know, I, I'm not going to be happy about it because I got real specific and it shows a certain amount of like artistic, you know, uh, sort of like uh, high end taste. Yeah. And of course, you know, we were thrilled to hear he was excited about Raphael Grandpa. And, you know, then, you know, as we went on to develop the story, he, you know, he told stories about buying Wolverine, the limited series number one by Chris Claremont and Frank Miller off the rack. And so, you know, it is clear through the years that he has always been interested in comics. He loves Jeff Darrow. He loves like there's just a huge list of comic book creators that he loves. So, you know, it's just um, it's it's everything. Keanu is everything that you want him to be. You know, he is kind, he's considerate. You know, the story I love to tell is we took a lot of meetings doing story conferences on the, on the uh, storyline. And by the way, if you think that this is something that Keanu handed off to Matt Kent to do, you're wrong. Keanu workshops this thing four hours at a time. We probably had 12 meetings of just story, story, story. Um, the first meeting he came in and sat down and um, he was waiting in reception for just a little bit, uh, mainly because I think I was crapping myself in the other room, trying to figure out how to like act cool. And then in the next meeting, he came in and when he came into uh, reception, um, he started talking to our assistant there 
And he was like, hey, how's your dog doing? Hey, how's your friend? Is your friend get, feeling better? And I was like, oh my gosh, he remembers everything right. that she said. And he kept track of it and he's following up. You know, and like, I can't remember, I go to the grocery store, I can't remember what my wife sent me to go buy, you know? So, um, you know, he's just kind, he's considerate, he's brilliant and focused. And I'll tell you one thing, man, you do not get to be somebody that has a career like that for 35 years in the movie business without being really, really good. Yeah, and we saw uh, just from our end, um, we've been working to produce exclusive variants for the first issue. Um, and there was, from the time that we got our art in, we were all excited, right? We thought we were going to be able to go show everybody. We got an artist that I don't even know if we're allowed to say the name, but I'll say it's an artist. We were excited um, to get on board to do this. And uh, then Morgan, who does coordinates that entire program for you guys, she is amazing, um, kind of hit hit the brakes with us and, and brought us back to reality and told us that like Keanu himself has to sign off on all of these, uh, you know, depictions of the character. Um, and even though we had what we felt like was a top tier artist and we were extremely proud of our covers that we, we were sweating, waiting what felt like forever um, to kind of get the approval that, okay, Keanu likes it. And then even though, we didn't draw it when we finally got the, the word back that, yeah, he liked it. It was like the best feeling. If it, was, <laughs> it was like NASA center, man. Yeah. We're all like, touchdown. <laughs> yeah. It was like, all right. Because we started doubting ourselves during that process because at first we were sitting there. We're like, oh, there's no way he's not. This is amazing. And then we're, I don't know, man. <laughs> he knows what he's looking for and <laughs> he's a well and I, I i will i will uh burnish your greek your geek cred by telling you that you probably got approved on the set of the matrix four that's so, real cool that's real cool yeah that's and and you know just think about think about this is when keanu was shooting matrix four so he's doing insane wire work you know high level martial arts uh, the full the full thing, the full 12 hours every day in Berlin. So he's doing that Monday through Friday. And then, you know, Saturday, Sunday, he's in Berserker land. So, you know, that is like, you know, I certainly, I can barely get off the couch and focus on what I'm going to do next. So I can't even begin to imagine what, uh, you he know. He really is immortal. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, he's in, he's, he's in incredible shape. He looks like he's, you know, 35. And uh, the guy can, you know, those stunts, he does his own stunts. So Yeah, I'd like to see uh, somebody pass up a, a first look opportunity at Berserker with Keanu Reeves. I don't, I don't, <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't think that's happening. But we'll, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Yeah. Well, we can't talk about Berserker without talking about one of, I thought, the most, I know everybody's got a take on this, um, but mine is that it was one of the most creative and unique um kind of companion releases i've ever seen in your kickstarter program uh where you guys released uh pre-orders for the entire first series 12 12 issues right through yep. um through uh hardbound editions uh with all kinds of different treatments and um embellishments and all kinds of different tiers there was even an, a, a tier that had availability to get keanu's autograph which that was something we talked about with arun at the time i don't think people realize yet how rare keanu's signature is they do like, not you're not gonna get a bunch of cgc signed books out there uh nope. signed by keanu so um those signatures are, are I, that sold out quickly. I expect that to be, but you guys did an enormous number um, with that Kickstarter. Can you tell us one, about what 1.7 million, but who's keeping track 1.7 million. Um, and I won't even say when we originally discussed it with the room, like the number we were talking about, but it wasn't 1.7 million. <laughs> So uh, um, that's one of those things. Can you tell us how, like, how, what was the idea for that? Um, how did you deal with the reaction from the market and some of the retailers who maybe didn't see the big picture of what you were trying to do? Well, the thing that I, I always center myself in, you know, sort of what is the opportunity? And so 
you know, I would find myself in a situation where, you know, Keanu wanted to do this book. He was super excited. We knew that we could take it to the direct market. It would be amazing. But, you know, I'd go to bed and I'd be thinking, you know, one of the things that really drives me with Boom is how do we get more people to read comics? Yes. Like, you can find people that, like, let me back up for a second. You cannot find anybody who hasn't seen a movie, hasn't watched a TV show, hasn't read a novel. You can find people who never read comics. Like, what are we doing to change that? Yeah. Especially and, for the longest time I had that stigma. <laughs> you read right. Comics? Absolutely. And the thing is, is like you see in our publishing, Lumberjanes. Lumberjanes is something that like my, one of my local retailers, uh, Pulp Fiction in Culver City, she started her store because of Lumberjanes, right? Like that to me, when I look back at my life and I go, what's my legacy? You know, I hope that I can spread this thing that I love so much. You know, we, we're putting out Roxane Gay um, has this book, The Sacrifice of Darkness. She's a New York Times bestselling author. She wrote this yeah. book called Bad Feminist. She's a huge, like she goes on, you know, uh, talk shows. You know, she goes on Bill Maher on HBO and like, you know, she's a huge pundit. That's a big deal. And it's like getting her to write a comic book so that people that read Roxane Gay, they would never read a comic book. Or, uh, you know, the Slaughterhouse-Five graphic novel we just did. We had to talk Kurt Vonnegut's estate into doing that project because they thought comic books were archy, you know, and we talked them into it. Stephen Christie did an amazing job uh, getting them to see w the literary value of this. So it's like, how do you get, like Keanu Reeves is a massive opportunity. And how do you get people to read comics? And the thing is, is, you know, that if you explain to a civilian, well, you know, it's 22 pages a month and it's, you know, four bucks an issue and they're spaced out 30 days apart. And sometimes it, it goes 37 or sometimes it goes 42 and, you know, you need to, it's like, no, right. I mean, one of the glories of graphic novels is that that has really opened a window. I mean, how many people have read Watchmen that have never read a comic book before because it's all contained in right. one thing, right? So how do we get them? Now, Amazon has a process that's super complicated and really hard where you could pre-order all three volumes or you could use Kickstarter, which everybody knows what it is and have one click and you could pre-order all three volumes and you have separate shipping charges where we could ship the book to you. Now, what we knew was we can set this up, like I'm gonna get really ticky tacky here and I'm gonna break it down, okay? The thing is, is with retailers that are huge to boom, which are our first priority and are the most important thing, okay? We knew the, the bottom tier was three soft covers. Let's say roughly, we haven't priced the soft cover for, um, uh, for Berserker yet, but basically think of it as like, let's say it's $14.99. It might be $15.99, whatever. It's $14.99, right? 15 bucks times three, 45 bucks, okay? The lowest tier is $50 now, and that's before shipping, okay? Now we did that on purpose because we didn't want direct market fans to be ordering their graphic novels through Kickstarter, okay? We wanted people that had not read comics to order through Kickstarter. So now you could go to your local shop and you can sign up for all three volumes and it'll be like 45 bucks and you don't have to pay shipping. So it's a cheaper price to get at your local comic shop. And some shops, if you pre-order, do discounts. As a matter of fact, most of them do, right? And so with that framework and that approach, our attitude was we can price this in such a way that it doesn't gouge the people on Kickstarter, but it disincentivizes a direct market fan from wanting to go to the Kickstarter and order from the Kickstarter instead of ordering from their local retailer. And one of the things that I did was I targeted 15 of the most prominent retailers in the business. And all the names that you're thinking of, all the people that you've seen that raise a hue and cry, that are the most vocal dudes that everybody's scared of, I picked up the phone and I called them one by one. And I said, let's have a conversation. This is what we want to do. And I want to hear if I'm wrong. Now, the key to this is we're serializing in the direct market first. Okay, That happens first, just like every Boom comic. And then we go through all four issues and then we collect it into a trade. And that goes to the direct market first, just like everything else. And it goes to the book market next, just like everything else. 
and then it goes to the Kickstarter fulfillment. So the window for retailers to be able to have the product exclusively is pretty massive. And through that process, you know, we're going to be mailing out pledges. You understand how the post office works. Those guys are not getting the book tomorrow, right? So, you know, people, but the people that are on Kickstarter, they don't care, right? They want to do one click. They want to buy the book and they want to get it in the mail and they don't want to think about it again, right? Now, in the and a lot of times on Kickstarter, it's not like, hey, I want to get it, but I'm not like chomping at the bit. I'll get it when it comes. Right, right. That's how I order on Kickstarter. Like I sometimes I hate getting updates where I'm like, mm. stop sending me stuff. I just want to get the book. Right. Like I'm cool. You know, I'm not upset or anything. It's just like send me the book. And so but then meantime, we had an opportunity, which is we had a huge mailing list of people that signed up for Keanu. Right. And we can send them an update when the first issue launches in comic shops. And we could basically say, hey, this book is coming to you, you know, five to six months later. But if you want to go to a comic shop right now, you can buy the first chapter, right? And understand it's just the first chapter, but there's all these different collectible covers. If you're interested in that, if you're not, no worries, your book's still coming. And so, I, you know, you know who Larry's Comics is? Oh yeah, we know, we know, we know Larry Doherty. Right. So Larry sent me a message and was like, hey, I'm getting phone calls from people that are signing up for the Berserker book that are piano fans, right? They're just signing up in a store Mm -hmm. with a pull list and they've never bought a comic before. So, and, and I got sporadically some other messages from some other folks that I can't recall off the top of my head, but we're seeing it and the books doesn't, you know, it's not going to come out until February. So, 